Today we're talking about shutters and gutters. We have these custom shutters made for this home and you're gonna see them on not every single window, but a handful of them. And a couple of things that you'll notice is that they're installed with authentic hinge hardware as well as shutter stays. Shutter stays are gonna be that piece of hardware in the bottom corner that essentially holds the shutter open. If I were to spin those out of the way, those shutters would actually close. Very different than what you see in a lot of homes where the shutters are attached to the siding. These are attached with the proper hardware. The reality is, is these shutters probably won't get closed very much. They are aesthetic. Big thank you to Atlantic Premium Shutters for sponsoring this video. They are a small mill workshop here in the US backed by a big company, Westlake Royal. And this color is actually made to match the garage doors in this home as well. Now, one of the other things I like about them is that they have a limited lifetime warranty. Some of the different styles that are offered are flat panel, raised panel, louver, combo, or Bahama. We're just a handful of weeks away from delivering. So I wanna walk you through some of the things that we got going on. And number one are uh, these gutters. A lot of you guys had asked what we're gonna be doing for gutters. I'd uh, asked if we were doing copper. These are not copper. These are a powder coated aluminum product. They are a half round, so you do have the gutter brackets that hold this half round gutter right up against that fascia board. If you look up at that roof, th this roof line here where the, the two gables come down to the center here, you'll actually notice that the, the rafter is a square cut rafter, not a plumb cut. If it was a plumb cut, your fascia board would actually be vertical. Instead, it's square cut with the face of it, so your fascia board actually ends up on a pretty steep angle. So we needed a specific gutter bracket to be able to attach to a roof line like that. So you'll notice that around the whole property on, on all of these roof lines. So we did a powder coated half round gutter that matches all of the trim. And then all of our downspouts are a three inch round aluminum that go down and tie into our drainage system that goes around the home. That drainage system is a standalone system that gets collected around the home and all of that water is discharged into a Caltech in the backyard. So we're recharging the groundwater through the Caltech system. This does not tie into any of the sump, sump pump system or any of the foundation drainage. It's a completely standalone system. And that was designed by our civil engineer prior to even starting construction here. You'll see behind me is that the front entryway is in process. We have a reclaimed brick. This brick was actually sourced by the same vendor that provided all the brick for the facade. So we connected our landscape contractor with them. And they were able to source additional brick. For those that don't remember, this brick actually came from a train station in New Hampshire and was reclaimed and now we're using it and putting it to its second life, we'll call it. On top of that, we have a bluestone patio and that bluestone patio walks you up to the front entry door as well as the second garage entry here. So this garage is the single car garage and then this right here is the beautiful walnut front entry door that we installed here with the arch top. You can see all of the mahogany has been installed tight to the brick and we'll get a small profile that will go around that and then all of that will get painted uh, to match the exterior trim and then the beautiful walnut will stay its walnut color. Taking a few steps down, we have a couple columns to install, but then as you look this way, they're installing the walkway that will bring you down over to the driveway. And with that being said, we needed this retaining wall. So they've actually installed a retaining wall with the same brick and make sure that the elevation for where the trees are remains where it needs to be. The thing to remember when we actually demoed the house, we had a much lower elevation in this property and these two trees were really important to save. And, and one of the things that need, we needed to do to make sure that we saved them is that we did not bury any more of the tree. So you'll see how the earth is actually ramped up around it. Very intentional. We had the arborist out here to make sure that we were doing it appropriately. And now that we're getting into our fi final weeks here, our, you're starting to get to see what that final condition looks like. As we walk around, you actually see on the nickel gap, so you can get a nice up close look at what hardware we're using. Uh, you can see these really great hinges and then these shutter stays. So if I spin those out of the way, these shutters actually close, uh, which is really nice. And one of the things that they add here, which is you wouldn't see in kind of an old shingle, are, are these spring-loaded catches. So if I swing that back, it's actually clipping on. And then this here, while it will hold the shutter, uh, you have that secondary uh, safety to prevent that from swinging out. The aesthetic of the hinge hardware and having the shutters slightly angled when they're open is a really nice look, leaning back to that authenticity that we're going for. Looping around, you'll see a lot of the landscape is done. You see the window wells have been flushed out. The masons are in progress with the entryway on the side here. All of the grass is, has grown in. Uh, we were very thankful to have a couple warm days. 
And then you'll see around the home is, is left off. This will be mulch beds and plantings eventually. But looping back here is another great view of some really big shutters. Oftentimes you see in a lot of these homes, the shutters are very small and they're applied to the, the siding and essentially screwed to the siding. Um, and they're not the size of the window. This is a more traditional approach where when those are shut, they're essentially closing the window. Looping around here, um, you can peek inside. I actually can smell it slightly that they are coating the, the floors inside. You get that medium brown, the floors are wet. Take a quick, I don't know if you can see it with the camera over there, but right in the middle of the room is a really great knot in the floor that we did not fill. And one of the really great things I think that the, the client requested is that we didn't fill any of those imperfections in the floor. I don't remember if we talked about it in the YouTube video, but this back here, this dining room, was actually clad in PVC. We had done that prior to knowing what the exterior trim color was going to be. When we painted it this dark gray, number one, the paint was not designed for PVC, uh, especially when it comes to expansion and contraction. And number two, we had failure. And we had some pretty substantial failure over in the large pieces. Ultimately, the team decided that they were going to strip it and redo it. And we've actually used the Duration True Exterior Boral product on this entire exterior. Got that all redone repainted right in time for this weather to cool down. Patio is being set back here. You can see all the string lines, the stoop between the pantry as well as the dining room. You can see that plywood up there. That's actually one of the window wells that needs to be uh, dealt with. We're gonna do some sort of railing around that. That window right there is the kitchen window. A few of you guys called out, hey, what happened to that window? That window actually spontaneously broke and Geldwin came out a couple weeks ago and got that all replaced. Then we have our stoop here that is tied into the mudroom. Beautiful little Dutch door. Essentially that upper sash or that upper section can swing and open by itself, leaving the lower section a really great looking detail here in the back of the home. And then as we work our way around, you'll see a couple more of the shutters and then another couple of views of the gutter. Going back, I wanted to point out this specifically uh, where that roof line is. So you can see how that square cut rafter and how that intercept or interacts with that half round gutter. The water's coming down and that bracket needs to be adjustable. And the reason that not every one of these roof lines is the same, and quite frankly, almost all of them are a little bit different. So having an adjustable half round roof bracket is gonna be really key to installing those at the angle that is necessary. We've talked about a lot of the materials throughout. Of course, the Da Vinci multi-width slate roof looks amazing on the property. We have some copper chimney caps on the top of the chimney. The team even went as far as to replace the boiler exhaust with a copper flue sleeve. You know, executive arch architectural millwork built these awesome PVC brackets that support all of these roof lines. Really great product, by the way. Um, you know, I know I was just talking about PVC not working there, but in this case, uh, it was a perfect opportunity to use PVC, uh, really, really lightweight and really, really simple to install, uh, and it, all things considered. And again, big thank you to Atlantic Premium Shutter for sponsoring this video. They're all made to order, custom colored, a number of different styles and come with that limited lifetime warranty. So really, really the cherry on top with the exterior here. Uh, it was one of the last things we got to put on this home and we'll be headed inside to wrap up the punch list and deliver this home before the holidays. Thanks for tuning in.